Do you have any SQL Server 2012s running on premises today? Well, that reached end of support on July 12th, 2022. And you might be wondering what your options are as you consider migrating or modernizing your existing workloads. Learn all about it this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, we're going to be talking about end of support. And to talk about that with us, I am bringing on Logan and Perry. So before we get into what that means, uh, Logan and Perry, could you please introduce yourselves? Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Logan Carrington. I'm part of the Azure Relational Database Marketing Team, and I focus on product marketing for SQL Server and Azure Virtual Machine. Excited to be here. Hi, everybody. My name is Perry Scuntrianos, and I'm a program manager with a SQL Server engineering team, currently focusing on availability and performance. Uh, excited to be here as well. Awesome. Cool. It's great to have you both on the show. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about end of support for SQL Server 2012, which happened on July 12th uh, this year. But if you missed that date, don't worry. Uh, that's why I brought on Perry and Logan to tell us a little bit more about what they can do now, what your options are. So maybe we should start by saying, you know, what is end of support and what are extended security updates? Yeah, awesome. And after a product reaches the end of life phase, it's actually no longer officially supported by Microsoft. SQL Server 2012, as you just mentioned, Anna, reached this state on July 12, 2022. At this point, if you're running SQL Server 2012 Enterprise or Standard Editions and want to remain on premises, there are actually three options for you. One is you upgrade to a newer version of SQL Server to leverage the latest capabilities and stay secure. Two, you can migrate to Azure for benefit from the scalability and elasticity of the cloud. Or as a last resort, three, you can actually purchase SQL 2012 extended security updates, which are otherwise known as ESUs. Okay, got it. So sounds like a good plan. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you get with ESUs? Yeah, so extended security updates actually don't include new features, functional improvements, or customer requested fixes. However, ESUs actually are available to customers running their workloads on in Azure, on premises, or hosting environments that offer critical security updates for a period of three years. Extended security updates actually also don't include technical support, but you can use an active support contract such as Software Assurance or Premier Unified Support to get technical support on workloads covered by ESUs if you choose to stay on-premises. Alternatively, if you're hosting on Azure, Anna, you can use an Azure support plan to get technical support. Got it, okay, so makes sense. ESUs definitely help, especially when it comes to critical security updates. Um, what's kind of the relief cadence for these updates? Is it daily, weekly, monthly? What, what can folks expect? It's funny you ask that, Anna. Extended security updates actually remain available if needed once a security vulnerability is discovered and is rated as critical by the Microsoft Security Response Center, otherwise known as the MSRC. Therefore, there's no regular release cadence for SQL as Microsoft can't provide technical support for SQL Server instances, both on-premises and in hosting environments that aren't covered with an ESU subscription. You know, we covered a lot of different things there, uh, I know I've probably been talking a lot, so I wanted to actually turn it over to Perry, where he'll actually discuss the process of signing up, getting ESU patches through the Azure portal, and so much more. Perry, turn it over to you, man. Thank you, Logan. So as, as Logan mentioned, uh, if you fall into that category of uh, uh, running SQL Server 2012 and you want to remain on premises, uh, one of the options, the last resort actually, is to go purchase the ESUs and then go over to the portal to register those SQL Server instances. So here uh, we have logged into the Azure portal, and then I'm going to navigate uh, under Azure Arc SQL Servers. And then here we have two options for uh, those customers. You can connect your SQL Server instance to Azure Arc, and with that, you get a lot of benefits, uh, as you might already know, like uh, Microsoft Defender and vulnerability scans. And the second option, if, if that's uh, not the right time for you to do that for you know, compliance reasons or other reasons, we offer the option to register your SQL servers with a disconnected state. I'm going to go over these two options real quick. 
So if you choose to connect your SQL Server to Azure Arc, you, you uh, enter these screens, and then I'm going to choose my uh, subscription. I created um, a research group. And then I'm going to go with the defaults here. And then at the end of this prompt, you get a, a script where you, you, you need to take that and install it locally on your SQL Server uh, and uh, connect directly to, to Azure. And by doing that, you get, as I mentioned, those additional benefits, uh, Anna. So that's option number one. But the second option here that I'm going to dive a little bit deeper is the registered disconnected SQL servers. So by clicking that, again, uh, I'm going to um, choose my subscription here and then my research group. And here we have two options. You can register a single uh, SQL instance or multiple SQL instances. I'm going to go with multiple SQL instances because we have found out that the, this is uh, the preferred option for uh, many of our customers. And then here we give the option to select a, um, a, a CSV file, which is under here. And then we're able to scan the, the uh, file and see that the inventory contain, contains three SQL instances and 48 license CSU cores. And just for uh, quickly demonstrating this file, uh, it contains you know, a name, version, edition, the number of cores, and the host type where you're running those SQL instances. So pretty straightforward. We're not capturing any PII data or any uh, other information. Clicking next, you have the option to link your invoice, your purchase invoice ID to those uh, uh, instances if you want. And then by create, we start the process of registration. And then uh, in, in a minute or so, uh, we should see those servers here. So this is how you register your SQL instances. And the final piece that I want to uh, show is how to get the, uh, the patch, actually, if, if, if and when we issue one. So you go into one of those SQL servers, and under Extended Security Updates tab, this is where the patch will be available So uh, for you to download and apply to your instances. So it's pretty straightforward. Gotcha. Cool. This is super useful, super straightforward. Like you said, I think it's really nice that uh, in both options that you showed, either you showed us a script, like a script is provided, so it makes it really easy. Or it's like, hey, this is the format that you need. That's how we're going to read it. We're not collecting any any PII data. You can keep it completely disconnected while still getting access to these extended security updates. So awesome demo. Love to see it. Uh, you know, Logan, Harry, as we kind of think about wrapping up, like if customers are today using on-prem for 2020 what do customers need to do right now, ideally? Uh, as Logan mentioned, three options, right? Uh, they can upgrade to a newer version of SQL Server and bypass the extended security updates, right? And also use the uh, cool features that the new SQL versions offer. The second option is migrate, modernize by uh, moving to Azure. Uh, in a VM or either in uh, Azure SQL. And the third option, last resort, is those ESUs where they can purchase the SKUs for the, their SQL Server instances and come back to the portal and register the, those instances. Um, everything that we covered here, Logan and I, uh, is uh, publicly available through our documentation, and we're going to add the link uh, under the video, I think. Yep. Awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Logan and Perry. This has been super useful. I learned a lot. I think our viewers probably learned a lot too. Hopefully all the viewers on SQL Server 2020 are ready to take action today. Uh, to do that, you can check the link in the description, like this video, leave us a comment and let us know what you think or if you have any questions. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs>